All right, so I'm a big fan of free and good. I mean, free and average is even nice enough, but it's very rare that you get something that's both free and amazing. So what we're gonna talk about in this video is Video Ninja. It's an amazing tool for producing online talk shows and virtual conferences and virtual events. So let's get into it. But before we do, be sure to like and subscribe to the channel, like this video. It really does help us appease the YouTube gods. Leave comments below if you have any questions. But again, let's jump into the video. So what is Video Ninja? Well, Video Ninja is basically a website that uses the web RTC feature to help you bring in a remote guest. Now they can do it from their computer, from their phone, whatever has a web browser it works with. Now, the cool thing about it is that it uses this web RTC protocol, which is used in stuff like Discord, but it opens up a bunch of different tools and features that work really well with production software like Expert Broadcaster. Now, we won't cover every single feature here, just some of the basics. But if you would like us to do a follow up video to get more in depth on this, let us know in the comments. But let's jump into how we set up Video Ninja. All right, so we go to VideoNinja.com. We're going to create a room and then we're basically going to set up ourselves as the director. Now, the director is the person basically producing the show. So you probably want to set a password and you, what you probably want to do is set it so that the guests that join will only see the director's video. Now, you can uh, leave this unchecked and they'll be able to see each other. But this uses a lot of bandwidth and can cause some lag. So it's best if they just see the video that you're sending out because they'll likely be able to see themselves anyway because you're going to be adding in their cameras. Now, if you're going to be part of the show, you can enable this, but it's not really that important because likely you're there at the computer and you'll be able to add your camera into the streaming software anyway. And you want to leave the video codec as default and then go ahead and enter the room. Now, when you're in the main control room for Video Ninja, you'll have a ton of options that you can see here. And then you can see there's a group scene and an invite scene. Now, the group scene we're going to ignore because we're going to use Expert Broadcaster to actually mix all these video signals. But pretty much what you're going to do is there's a ton of features and options here, but the only one we really want to enable right now is just so that the guests can hear each other. And then you're going to copy this invite link. So you'll share this link to your guests and your guests can open this on their phones. They can open it on their computers. They open it in a browser. The browser will ask for access to their camera device and their microphone device. Then they'll have this menu where they can basically select the device that they want to use. Then they just click start. They'll be taken into this next menu where they have simple controls like they can mute, unmute, they can talk and chat, they can send a file, do different stuff. But pretty much that's all the setup that they need from there. All right, now back in the control room area, you're going to want to send them something back as the director. So you're going to want to enable this director, camera and microphone. It'll ask for permission and basically it's going to ask you for a camera source and a microphone source that you'll send them as like their kind of screen or preview so they can know what's going on during the show. So for the camera, you're actually going to want to use Expert Broadcaster's virtual camera because that way it'll basically output, you know, whatever is going live to the stream. You can even set up like the preview scene that I mentioned in previous videos that'll show like all the camera feeds. Now for the microphone, you don't want to send them the expert broadcaster virtual microphone because it'll send everything, especially if you're on the same PC, like it'll send their audio baggage to them. It can be very disorienting. So you probably just want to send them your microphone so they can hear you talking to them or when you give them cues or anything like that. Now there's this other option here to basically enable the audio preview. So if you're interacting with the show and you need to hear what the guests are saying, you want to enable this so you can hear it, but you want to be really selective on what device you set this to, because if you set this playback to the same playback device on XSplit, then XSplit's going to pick up this audio and it's going to create double audio for when we bring in the guest's audio feeds independently. So if you have an extra side audio device that you can listen to this on, then set it to that. But that's pretty much it. Now you can adjust the bandwidth of this. So if you want to give them a better preview or better feed, you can increase this, but do note that there are limits to this. And if the guests are in really far remote locations, you probably might want to avoid this option or keep the bandwidth low. Okay, now for the last step to bring in each guest's individual video and audio feed. Now there's a simple way to do this and a hard way to do this. Now the simple way is basically you're going to copy each guest's like independent link here. You can paste it in Expo. It's going to open as a browser source. And then you can select if you want to set it to system sound or stream only sound. If you set it to system sound, you might you know, hear it in your ear. Now, this is an easy way to do it, but you won't be able to adjust each guest's audio level independently. So 
There's a more advanced method, which is the one I recommend. So the other method, you're gonna download this app called the Electron app. I'll link to it in the description. But basically what this does is it opens up a browser source window, but what this lets you do is assign a playback device. So each window you open up will be for each guest, and then you can assign a different playback device to each window so that you can add multiple playback devices in XSplit, and that way you have an independent audio level to adjust per guest. So pretty much you take the guest link, you paste it in this window, you assign the playback device, and then you use XSplit screen capture to capture that window, and it'll only capture that window. You can even rename the window so they're easier to manage. Now, in XSplit, you know, you add the playback device and you assign it to that and you mix the audio settings as you need. Now, if you don't have multiple playback devices on your PC, now the playback devices are things like headphones or monitors and stuff like that. But if you don't have a lot of these, what you can actually do is download virtual audio cable and it'll create more virtual playback devices that you can assign these to because you don't really need to hear these. You just need the audio to output so XSplit can capture it and you can mix it you'll be able to preview this from the director's window in your browser. So really handy way to control the video and you'll get higher video quality and it's a bit more stable. And I like this method if you're producing a show, if you wanna make things really exact. And that's about it to getting started with Video Ninja. Now this really has only scratched the surface of what's possible using this tool. Now, thankfully the developer is very thorough and has given tons of documentation on the different commands and adjustments that you can do with this app and i do recommend checking it out and trying it out you know you can really tweak individual things like audio bit rate and video bit rate to get really high quality stuff so do check that out and mess with it and you can get some really high quality stuff here now i will say this does not replace every other tool for doing this out there you should really test it see if it works because there are limits with web rtc connections again like i said especially with people in really different far away places they might have different connections to you and some other tools actually build servers in specific regions to kind of help manage this so do test it do try it out let me know if you have any questions in the comments thanks again for watching again leave a like and subscribe if this was helpful see you in the next video